Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video on Myth of Empires. So I've been really enjoying the game so far and as I'm starting to progress up into the higher or perhaps more intermediate levels, I just thought it would be a nice fair video just to run for you a few of the key tips that I've learnt so far whilst playing the game. And firstly, there seems to be some sort of misunderstanding as to how XP gain works in Myth of Empires, at least amongst newer players. Essentially, XP is awarded for items collected, and by that I mean if you went out and harvested 10 branches, you'll get double the amount of XP as if you harvested 5 branches. The amount of time your character stands chopping at a tree or rooting around on the floor for branches is irrelevant. It's directly related to the amount of resources that you gather. Therefore, the important factor here is what governs the speed, in this case, of branch collection. So that would be determined by woodcutting proficiency, the guild woodcutting skill, the tier of axe you are using, stone, bronze, iron. You get my point. It's based on the amount you collect, not this time you spend collecting. This then really leads directly to my second point, which is PvP servers and why you should join one as soon as you are reaching level 16. Because on PvP servers, the drop rates of resources is increased quite significantly. And as we know from my first point, increased resource drop rates equal increased XP gain. Yes, exactly. So you are of course taking the risk that you can of course be killed by other players on the PvP server or get your base raided. But generally, the servers are quite large and the population quite small. So it's not as if you're going to be attacked all the time and you can be really relatively safe. And I think for the XP gain that effectively you're gaining, you'll level up a lot quicker and the risk is definitely worth it. For my third tip, I want to talk about the skills tree. In Myth of Empires, there are a number of different skills or proficiencies that you can level up, from mining to crossbow to physique. And each of these proficiencies level up basically as you use them. For example, to take light armor, it increases as you obviously wear light armor and use stamina. So basically perform activities whilst wearing light armor. It means that your light armor proficiency goes up. You also get a number of these expertise points. These can be basically used to increase the rate of experience gain for these proficiencies. Now, a key point here is that they are very cheap to move around. You get five free per week, but after that, the gold cost is just like a couple of bronze always move them into what you are trying to level at the time. It makes a huge difference. With five expertise points in, you're going to be levelling that proficiency at six times. That makes a huge difference and is going to level you up so much quicker. It is also worth pointing out that when you reach 450 skill and a proficiency, like I've just done now here with the crossbow, you will actually need to go to the skills trainer at an NPC camp and pay 8,500 bronze, so it's quite expensive, will the ability to continue to level this further. Finally, just before we move away from the proficiencies, the unlockable skill nodes that you can select little green circles under 450 proficiency points are always worth unlocking. There is no cost to this, it's just a free boost. So click them, get them, you know, you're absolutely well worth having. Once you pass 450, some of them will require perk points to actually unlock them, so then you have to put a little bit more thought into it. You're going to be getting these perk points from shrines, but that's a topic for another video. For my fourth tip, I want to briefly cover leveling weapon proficiencies. You may have been wondering why I was just randomly firing my crossbow into the air, but in Myth of Empires, for ranged weapons, it's the act of firing which levels your skill, not hitting. So in this case, I made 600 stone bolts, a large number of poor quality crossbows, and just started aimlessly blasting away into the air. You can do the same thing with melee weapons and a captured NPC tied to a torture rack. Just make sure to feed them and over damage them. And it is an awesome way of leveling your weapon proficiencies really quickly without just having to fight other players and other NPCs in the open world. For tip number five, which is really directly related to the previous tip, it's boosters. So you may have noticed that while I was firing my crossbow into the air, in the top left corner, I actually had a buff active. And that's because I paid for the 102% proficiency booster for one hour at the guild's boundary marker. It's going to cost you around about 2000 bronze to get both parts for the hour, but the increased rate of proficiency leveling is massive 
and so in my opinion it is absolutely well worth it. And of course, don't forget to have all five expertise points in what you are levelling as well, and then you'll see that your weapon proficiency, or whatever proficiency you're levelling at the time, it could be riding, it could be light armour, will go up massively. For tip number six, we are back at the boundary marker. But this time, it's not to lose money, but to actually make bronze coins. All players get a daily allocated amount that they can sell to the boundary marker, and you could pretty much sell anything you want. But you've just got to bear in mind that there is both an item limit and a bronze coin limit. So for example, I can sell these leaves, which will make me a good amount of money, but it will actually use up about half my item limit, but not but less than half of my bronze limit. So in that means it's not 100% efficient. The animal fat, on the other hand, is worth more per item, so therefore I would be able to hit my maximum daily amount of bronze out of the boundary marker, so therefore it would be a more efficient item to donate. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Tip number seven, it's bears, wolves and tigers. All three of these are auto-aggressing creatures. That means that essentially if you get too close to them, they will automatically lock onto you and attack you and chase you. Unlike boars, foxes, deer and well, even rabbits, which will of course gladly ignore you as long as you leave them alone as well. If you do happen to aggro a wolf, then you can sort of beat them not too badly just by sort of walking around them essentially so that they their attack misses you every time. You can actually avoid, once you get the hang of this, you can avoid them relatively easily. But if you pick up a bear or a tiger, really you need to either outrun it on a horse or find a nearby river, as it seems that creatures are pretty deathly afraid of water and they actually won't follow you if you cross a river, so it can be quite a good way of finding safety. Finally, for tip number eight, it's a really basic one, but remember that you have to use crafting benches to get any experience off of them. It's not just putting your items in, setting the process off crafting and walking away. If you want to get XP out of the crafting, then you have to press and hold E on the bench and select use. Your character will then effectively sort of man the crafting bench and then you'll start to get both character XP and proficiency experience in the relevant crafting field as the bench crafts items. So you have to use it to get character experience. Not really a tip on its own, but do check out the nobility and the achievement tabs. Achieving both increased nobility level and unlocking and finishing some of these achievements do actually give you character boosts. There might only be, you know, half a percent at a time, but things like some of the damage and durability boosts that you get do stack up, so it's well worth giving that tab a check out. But anyway, that's all we've got time for on today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions about any of the tips or anything else in the game, do let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching guys, and I shall see you all on the next video.